Welcome to Destination Everywhere International. We are Mandy and Orlando, and we're taking you on an expedition cruise to Antarctica, the uninhabited seventh continent. That's here, the white splodge by the South Pole at the bottom of the globe. In this video, we'll explain the difference between expedition cruises and mainstream cruises. We'll take you on a tour of the ship to the lounges, the restaurants, and the shops, and around its luxury facilities, the spa, the sauna, the infinity pool, the jacuzzi, and the gym, and you'll see our cabin too. We'll also show you the dining options and what's on the menu. And we'll take you with us on our daily excursions out on the ice. And we get up close and personal with the incredible wildlife and breathtaking scenery that is Antarctica. Lastly, we'll tell you how much all this costs. So wrap up warmly because it's freezing. Because Antarctica is 5 million square miles of ice and is uninhabited apart from scientists and researchers on bases like this, you have to go by cruise ship. But the Antarctic Treaty says that ships with more than 500 passengers can only cruise the Antarctic but not land. So if you take a 5,000 passenger cruise ship, you'll see the wildlife from a distance, you'll see the icebergs and with really good lens you'll get great pictures, but you can't actually set foot on the continent. So that's why you need a smaller expedition ship. And that's why we chose Hurtigruten. The cruises leave from Argentina or Chile, the southernmost points of the neighboring continent, South America. And it's a three-day crossing over the Drake Passage. So before we get to the penguins, let's talk about the ship and what to do on board. Hurtigruten is a Norwegian cruise line and our ship was the Roald Amundsen. Recognize the name from history class? Amundsen was a Norwegian explorer, the first navigator to reach the South Pole in 1911, beating out Robert Falcon Scott of England and putting Norway on the map. This gorgeous ship is hybrid powered, about 460 feet long, 95 feet high with 11 decks. And with 11 decks, you'll find yourself going up and down in the elevators all day. But that's the fun part. There's a huge high-tech LED screen, 17 meters high, and the scene changes throughout the day. Sometimes it's penguins, sometimes it's different countries, and it goes from deck four right up to deck 11. Let's start with the fun stuff up on deck 10 with the jacuzzis, the infinity pool, and the sauna. I know it looks cold, especially in our swimsuits, but the pool is warm and the jacuzzis are even hotter. And yes, you can walk around the ship in the robes from your cabin. Good morning from Antarctica. We are somewhere near Peterman Island. I've got a cold. And um, my hair is frozen in the jacuzzi, which is lovely. It's minus two degrees. And so they have decided to make hot soup and toasted sandwiches in the pool bar right behind me. It's snowing! And how cool is this? From the comfort of our jacuzzis, we watched the kayakers and the humpback whales breaching all around them. But it was still cold, so to unfreeze my hair and warm up, we headed inside to the sauna to watch the orca whales just frolicking in the ice. Another place on deck 10 to lounge around is the Explorer Lounge. I filmed this at six o'clock in the morning, but there are usually people sitting around and watching the wildlife at the windows. There's also this screen, a map which tells you exactly where you are in the world. And behind it is the bar where they have the cocktail of the day and coffee and cake every afternoon at three. And at the other end of the bar, at the front of the ship, are these lovely chaise long. It's quiet up here and you can read and sleep. But what better way to relax than on deck seven at the spa? They do massages and facials and the prices are pretty reasonable for a cruise. I had a mini facial for $65. But if the spa is not your thing, the gym is right next door and trust me, you will need to work out with all the food on board. There are three restaurants. The main restaurant is called Aun on the sixth floor. At breakfast and lunch times, it's buffet style with meat, fish, and vegetarian options. There's a different homemade soup and carvery every day, but if you fancy something a little lighter, 
There's a selection of meats, cheeses, and of course, Norwegian salmon. There's a salad bar and fresh fruit so you can be really healthy, or you can blow it with the ice cream and an abundance of naughty cookies and cakes. The Alm restaurant is casual with priceless views, the best views I've ever experienced from any restaurant, a different landscape or animal to see each day. How can you possibly concentrate on dinner? Be prepared for your meals to be disturbed by a humpback whale puffing outside and everyone running to the window to take photos. There's so much wildlife around and this tends to happen every day. In the evenings there are different themes and some nights are a la carte service where the food is a little more gourmet. But if you're more of a burgers and fries kind of person, go to the Fredheim around the corner on the same floor. There you can get sandwiches, big juicy burgers, tacos and a few other international dishes. Or just go for the shakes. They'll even add a shot of booze to your shake if you ask nicely. But this was our favourite, the Lindstrom up on the ninth floor. There's a $25 surcharge per person, but that's for a three-course meal and free-flowing wine. Cheap at twice the price, I'd say. So Mark, what's on the menu tonight? So we have the beef tartare for the main one, we have the salmon, and we have also the, the sirloin. Okay. Okay. And we have also the pizza and, and, and the porchetta. And the porchetta. Porchetta is a pot. Yes. 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 Well, I know what I would like to go for. Yes. I think I do. All right, that's all done. Let's take, start taking orders, the ladies first. Hertigruten is different from the other cruise lines in that during the day, they'll have the scientists do lectures on things like uh, clouds and birds and the difference between the albatrosses and the different kinds of whales that you'll see. And you will see them. We saw orcas, humpbacks, minke whales. Some lectures are held outside. And they're going to explain to us the different clouds and these people will watch from the jacuzzi you'll also find wildlife experts on deck oh look we've just found an ornithologist looking for birds most lectures are inside on the sixth floor at the science center right next to the reception and the gift shop their pectoral fins, slap on the water, all kinds of stuff. We'll talk a little bit about that. My favorite lecture was on the whales. We learned how to differentiate them from the way they puff. This heart-shaped puff is a humpback whale. The lectures are informative, fun, and they prepare you for what you're about to see on the ice the following days, like the penguins, the jantou, the chinstrap, and the adeli. We learned about what they eat, that's this pink shrimp-like krill, and how they build their own penguin highways. And the lecturers like to baffle you with the science in order to demonstrate how not to get shit on by these fluffy little animals. It's 1.34 meters, just so you know. Also in the Science Centre, the expedition team are on hand to show you the touchscreen map of Antarctica and answer your questions, however silly, like how to pronounce Hurtigruten. How do you say it properly? In southern Norway we say Hurtigruten. Hurtigruten. Okay, I got it. In northern Norway they say Hurtigruta. Okay, I'm going to go with the first one, it's easier. <laughs> Thank you. You're very welcome. In the Science Centre, there are plenty of other things to do. There's a library, a place to do jigsaws, and even an arts and crafts room. Can you tell us what happens in here? Uh, here we have uh, different activities, and uh, we can also make origami penguins or the clay penguins. Uh, you cannot take a wild penguin back home, but you can make your own penguin and bring it home. We'll see you in here. Thank you, Lancy. You're welcome. But don't be surprised if your lecture or clay penguin making activity gets interrupted by whales. Because when the captain announces whale sightings at the front of the ship, everyone runs out on deck. Talking of the captain, he invited us all up to his office, to the bridge where we could walk around, 
ask questions and check out the navigation systems. I wonder what this button does. Can we make this thing go faster? With all the excitement on deck, sometimes it's just nice to relax in your cabin. Even though ours was just a garden variety cabin, it felt spacious. There were two reclining chairs and the bed was amazingly comfortable. It was like lying on clouds and I'm not joking. There was a flat screen TV where we could watch movies or even the lectures live from deck six. And the map on the screen showed us our exact location every day. And this was the bathroom best part being the heated floor. So luxurious. Oh look, we've arrived in Antarctica. It's time to get dressed. We're getting ready to go out onto the ice in Antarctica. So I've got my base top and then I've got my thermal underwear, waterproof ski pants. I look like a Michelin man after all of this. <laughs> the hurty gluten coat. Everybody has to have one. The pom-poms aren't going to fill in. <laughs> I need my hat. <sighs> and I almost forgot my water bottle because it is so dry here. It's unbelievable. Hook that. My sunglasses. That's it. All wrapped up, snug as a bug, and I'm ready to go to the expedition launch on deck three. The Zodiac's just coming in from the penguin colony over here and the next lot is about to go. And here's a snapshot of our five days on the ice. For more Antarctica and much more wildlife, check out our next video, Five Days on Ice. Boarding the ship and disinfecting our boots for the last time, we were ready for a nice three-day cruise home across the Drake Passage. Except instead of having a Drake Lake, we had a Drake Shake. 56 knot winds, 6 meter swells and an incoming storm. Apparently this button does make the hybrid ship go faster and the captain veered east to avoid the worst of the storm. And thank God for the medical center downstairs and the nice doctor who was able to heavily sedate me because this girl was not happy. But apart from that, this cruise was without doubt a trip of a lifetime, a magical, wild and wondrous adventure, a priceless experience. Well, okay, not entirely priceless, Let's break down the cost. 
It's the highlights of Antarctica, a 12-day cruise, and yes, it's eight and a half grand. But on the bright side, the flight from Buenos Aires down to Ushuaia is included, as is accommodation on the ship. So is the 10 tons of food, beer, and wine, and all the excursions onto the ice for five days. And apart from the little shop on the ship, there's really nothing to buy. What's not included is an optional camping trip overnight. That's about $400, but you couldn't pay me to sleep in a tent in the middle of Antarctica. An afternoon of kayaking is also extra, about $200, but that's pretty much it. But all of this, this, the beauty of the white continent, is free. Thank you for watching this video and thank you for letting us share the world with the world. We invite you to subscribe to our channel and can't wait to show you our next Antarctica video, Five Days on the Ice.